Good morning, and welcome to another edition of the House Whisperer Show on WWDB. I'm Barry Reisman, inviting you to stay tuned for expert advice about maintaining your house from the roof to the basement and everything in between. Featuring professional home inspector Jack Milne, who tells us that every house has a story. And uh, Jack, I sort of feel like uh, your topic for today is directed to me, along with a few other people, but especially to me. Well, Barry, I think of uh, this new generation, that's, that's, uh, which we call the millennials, um, grew up with uh, computer games and computers. I mean, they're much more technically savvy uh, than we ever were. But at the same time, I've found a lot of them, as I meet them during the course of a home inspection, don't know how to hold a hand tool. Uh, so, yeah, today's uh, topic is called maintenance, home maintenance for dummies yep. 101. That's me. <laughs> but um, I want to I wanted to tell you a little story that actually happened to me, and it may relate to a lot more people who are getting their lawn equipment out. As you may remember, last fall I discussed getting the lawn equipment ready for now for this coming spring. Well, here it is mid-May, and I've cut the lawn at my office uh, quite a few times now. And last week, my mower stopped running with about 15 feet left. And there's nothing worse than only having, like, one or two pathways to make. So I went through my checklist. Oil was okay. I, I put my newer air filter in last fall. Check on that. New spark plug, of course. Blade was still fine. So what now? Well, I took him to my local shop and found out that my carburetor was blocked. And here, last, last fall, I drained the gas, I added my seafoam, um, and I actually had cut the lawn uh, every day, you know, or every week since tax day. So when I sent it to my local fix it guy, he asked me how old the gas was that I was using. And I did have five gallons in my uh, garage for the snowblower, uh, two gallons from last, last fall. I did mix both of them. And I guess from the, the gas sitting, it tended to lose its octane, its octane or the capacity to ignite. So $46.46 later, I'm going to be back at work. So uh-huh. my advice is if you have any old gas, try to get rid of it by blending it with new gas, uh, maybe in your car. Because if you put it in your car, it's going to be expended a lot faster than if it's in a small motor. So bottom line, even the house whisperer can learn a few things. So uh, today's topic was really from my son, who was 23 and considered a millennial. So his question was, how can kids of my generation learn how to do their own maintenance uh, in their apartment, in their condo, or even in their first home? So today's segment, again, Home Maintenance for Dummies 101. So before we kick in, of course, I want to thank the sponsors, uh, Bucksmont Inspections from Sellersville, Pennsylvania, Rob Bowie, excellent in what he does is, is in regarding to uh, the maintenance, repair, replacement uh, of on-site sewage systems. Um, about two weeks ago, we lost the opportunity to inspect a large compound in South uh, Jersey because it had multiple homes but on one cesspool. So this gentleman could not even sell his home until his on-site sewage system was updated to modern times. So if you have any type of area in your, on your property where you flush your toilets and your waste goes into it, keep it up and running. It's very important. It's very expensive to replace. So their number is 215-669-4213. Website is bucksmontinspections.com. Borrow exterminating out of Glen Olden, Pennsylvania. They do termite and radon testing, and they cover uh, definitely portions of Philadelphia, Montgomery County, Chester, and Delaware counties. Um, their phone number is 610-586-5640. Pest Blaster, they're out of Hamilton, New Jersey, but again, not only do radon testing in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, but also mold testing with destroying insect evaluations as well as pest removal. So the phone number is 215-295-5555, um, and their website is pestblaster.com. Well, I did finally get my totally useless tour shirts from brainflushgear.com, 
and we're taking a trip this summer to Eustis, Maine, and they came up with some awesome concepts. So I'm wearing them now and pr- proud to do so. Their contact is, uh, is literally contact at brainflushedgear.com. Tri-County Inspection Company, we're based out of Marshville, Pennsylvania, but we do serve 15 counties. Our website is tcinspect.com. We have a bunch of different phone numbers, but locally, let's say in the Lehigh Valley folks, 610-346-7880. Uh, New Jersey, 609-882-5188, and Bucks Montgomery County, uh, 215-295-2030. And as always, please let these sponsors know that you've heard their ad on the House Whisper Show. It's a nice way to keep track of everything. So uh, just a small email box visit. This is from Andrea from Willow Grove. Uh, Jack, I listened to your show in February about carpenter bees. I think I may have them. Uh, what do they look like? <laughs> so, Angie, carpenter bees look like big bumblebees, almost three-quarters of an inch uh, to an inch in length, and they tend to hover by an area of interest, uh, be it your fascia board, your soffit, or your wood siding. Uh, look for perfectly half-inch round holes, and uh, because this is where they bore into the lumber in order to leave their larvae. They also tend to leave a mustard color uh, stain on the siding if they have found a good spot. So this is their time um, to make their presence known. If you suspect you have, have them get, get your property evaluated by Burr Exterminating at 610-586-5640, or again, Pest Blaster at 215-295-5555. If not treated, the larvae will attract woodpeckers, and then the holes can be up to three to four inches around. So, Andrea, thanks for your question, and, and good luck. Folks, any questions any time, email me at the Show at gmail.com. And, I, again, I love the podcast offered by WWDB because even sometimes I like to hear the shows a second time. And the archive shows that, uh, are found at the com. I ask that you visit the site, and there's a lot that you can learn um, about the maintenance of your home. So, finally, let's dig in. Home Maintenance for Dummies 101. Um, About a year ago, I did an inspection for a young man from New York City. His parents owned a co-op where the maintenance on the unit was performed by the association or their own hired individual. This gentleman bought a co-op, and basically he had the same type of coverage. So as an inspector, I always ask how handy a person may be. Uh, This gentleman didn't even own a hammer. So... Uh, I told him to go visit the com for the segment from, believe it or not, May 18th last year, which is almost a year, Barry, believe it or not. Um, and the segment was on what's in your toolbox. And it's, I think it's good for all novices. So, again, please re- revisit the show, and this will get you started. But, uh, Barry, again, that was 51 shows ago. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, time flies. Whew. So let's move on after that little pat on the back. So we typically uh, learn things from our parents. And, and now that you're on your own, it's, it's easy to think how lucky you were that you had a parent who was handy and may from time to time help you out. But after, uh, you know, after some time and all of a sudden, you may find yourself needing a professional electrician, a plumber, or, or, or other technician to knock on your door. And every time they knock, folks, it's a, at least 100 bucks, And then they're going to ask you what you need to get done. So from there, the costs tend to drop maybe a little bit from 70 to $80 an hour to continue. So once you spend 200 to $300 per weekend on your new home, all of a sudden you may feel like the light bulb is going to go off, and you have to begin to do some of the basics on your own. So, um, so today's segment... Uh, again, is what can we do to help out the millennials? And as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, these are are the current generation who were born with a computer next to the crib. So you really want to try to take full advantage uh, of this household tool. You can Google things. You can check websites like DIY sites and learn how to either take things apart or put them back together. It's kind of basic, but it works. And you know, simple things like installing a dimmer switch 
outlets, GFCI receptacles, is selling a garbage disposal, is selling a clothes washer, dishwasher, etc., isn't really rocket science. But when you are dealing uh, with with particularly water and electric and electricity, you want to take extra care to make sure that the power is off in that general vicinity, and of course that the water lines are turned off too, because. The last thing you want to go, do is get hosed and electrocuted uh, for the same job. So the other suggestion I have is hire the contractor and watch. And Barry and I were talking about that before today's show because he had mentioned where he had been in a, a storefront where the, jo- the, the job rate was, was $50 an hour, but if you watch, it's $75 an hour. That's right. <laughs> so... I think it's, they don't mind you watching, provided that you don't become a nuisance. And and I don't think that they mind uh, you asking questions, because I think the t- technicians today don't mind the company. They may even like a hired hand. Hey, Jack, can you go down and switch that breaker off for me now? Or, uh, hey, Jack, out of my out of my van, can you grab me the circuit tester? You know, so little things like that. Um, by by watching and becoming a part of it, uh, you tend to learn. And uh, and I, I, I honestly feel that pestering the contractor will, will not only annoy him, but it, it will also tend to probably rush the work so he can rush out your door. But again, you know, most contractors that I find do like the questions and may ask for help, too. So watch, but don't pester. Exactly. All right, tell you what, we're going to take a little break, Jack, and then we're going to come back and have more of today's topic, Home Maintenance for Dummies 101, right after this. Oro Exterminating has been specializing in wood-destroying insect inspection and control for over 40 years, serving Philadelphia and the surrounding counties. All inspectors are state certified and ensure providing their clients with professional inspections and treatments. Oro not only performs conventional termite treatments, but also handles special services like historic buildings and homes with wells, creeks, or ponds. The client is assured that all treatments will be performed safely when you hire Boro to do the work. They also provide radon testing in their service area. Boro's full-time office staff is available to help you schedule an appointment. Just call 610-586-5640. Or send an email request to boroughinspects at verizon.net. That's 610-586-5640. Or email at boroughinspects at verizon.net. Specially created t-shirts by brainplushgear.com offer the extreme sports enthusiast an opportunity to have a clothing line available that suits their sport. Brainflushgear.com understands that when we get the moment where we can jump on our motorcycles, wave runners, surfboards, snowmobiles, or skateboards, it can be priceless. They offer custom artwork including silk screening, transfers, and embroidery. Speak to one of their consultants today and they'll help you create your own Brain Flush. Visit Brainflushgear.com or email them at contact at Brainflushgear.com. For your septic inspection and testing needs, please consider Buxmont Inspections. They've been serving the Bucks and Montgomery County areas for over 15 years. As members of the Pennsylvania Septage Management Association, the Pennsylvania Association of Sewage Enforcement Officers, and the Pennsylvania Association for Professional Soil Scientists, Buxmont Inspections can inspect your existing septic system or test for your new septic system placement. Please call Rob Bowie at 215 66 and say you heard their ad on the House Whisperer Show. Tri-County Inspection Company has been providing professional home inspections, commercial inspections, and historic property evaluations for over 30 years. For all of your real estate transactions, call Tri-County Inspections at 215-295-2030. For their New Jersey clientele, call 856-853-4224. 
Tri-County Inspection Company covers 13 counties serving both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. They have performed inspections for over 70,000 clients and are members of the American Society of Home Inspectors as well as the Pennsylvania Home Inspectors Coalition. They are licensed in both Philadelphia and New Jersey. Call 215-295-2030 or 856-853-4224. As the weather gets cooler and the temperatures drop, the bugs might slow down, but the rodents don't stop. Mice and rats begin to invade homes during the fall and winter months, looking for food, warmth, and a comfortable place to nest. Don't wait for pesky rodents to invade your home. Fight back. Have your home baited and ready for their attack with Pest Blaster. Whether preventative or a full-blown infestation, give Pest Blaster a call at 215-295-5555 and they can discuss the solution to your problem. They also offer humane animal removal services for a wide variety of wild animals, damage repairs, and cleanups. Call them today at 215-295-5555 or check them out at PestBlaster.com. Servicing both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Pest Blaster, 215-295-5555 or PestBlaster.com for all your pest control needs. And we're back with Jack Milne, the house whisperer. And uh, I love today's topic. It's home maintenance for dummies 101. And Jack, let's go back back to school for the next uh, edition of our class. Well, Barry, this was like perfect timing, too, because you want to tend to be knowledgeable about the project that is at hand. Uh, Maintenance books at the box stores um, tend to make for easy reading, uh, I think with pretty good pictures uh, that can take you step by step on how to do wiring, maybe sweat that joint, you know, using copper and solder, and, and maybe learn how to use these new fittings called shark bites that don't require soldering at all. They can tell you how to build bookcases. They can tell you how how to hang doors, cut trim, and many other things that all of a sudden, you know, you do have to learn. And, again, if the contractor's on site, uh, your questions will tend to carry a lot more weight, too. And I really stress this with people who are buying new construction because when we do phase inspections, and that's be at the foundation, the rough framing, pre-drywall, pre-settlement, we want our clients next to us so they can learn about how their house works, but also raise their credibility with the builder. So it doesn't matter your age. I think knowledge in the construction field uh, is lifelong. So um, take full advantage of it. The next little topic I talk about is the six-pack or case of beer deal. Your friends may have friends who have grown up in the trades, and I think all are willing to do that small job for a few few beverages. And this is a nice opportunity in in a relaxed setting to learn how to make a roof or a siding repair, maybe install windows, but try not to raise the ante too much because the beverage deal only goes so far. And the beverages, as I always tell everybody, should always be consumed after the job is done. Um, and, you know, it, it also doesn't hurt to throw some cash, as this is a, a good way to say thank you. So sometimes you can incorporate your buddies for painting. Uh, Painting, I think, is one of the easiest things to do that you can do uh, on your own, and we're going to talk about that next. But, you know, if you personally have a fear of ladders, don't climb them. If you if you have a, fr- a feeling or, or th- uh, that you're going to fall, I remember years ago my wife and I were in Paris. We had to wait two hours to get to the Eiffel Tower. We got to the top. She looked over one side, felt like she needed to jump. She go she had to go back down. Uh, so we, we 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 got her back down. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> but I had to look at least at all four sides of the city uh, before I went back down. So. If you have any fears, uh, doing a job in a, in a crowded environment uh, tends to be a little bit shaky. If you have a, a fear of insects, then don't go into the crawl space if you find spider webs. Um, you know, learn your limits and then 
uh, again, if you have friends who can help you through the process, I think that's always a good idea. Maybe they can get you past your fears or at least help you learn, how again, how to do things. But let's get back to painting. Uh, I always think that this is the first thing that any property needs uh, needs when you first take possession. Now, the house may be of only one color uh, because the realtors say, you know, let's get rid of all the colors in the home and let's make it beige or white. Um, but, you know, in time, I think you want to add color because that's what's going to make your house a home. And painting, I feel, is always in the prep work. Um, you want to remove the place from your receptacles and your switches. Um, you also want to take a piece of painter's tape and tape over the receptacles and the switches so that if your roller uh, runs by it or your brush and, and makes an accident, you don't end up with paint on the receptacle because you know what happens next. You want to grab your screwdriver or you want to grab your knife and you want to try to peel the paint you know, off that receptacle before you know you get electrocuted. So a little piece of tape over the receptacle or switch uh, keeps you from ha making that happen. Of course, you want to cover the trim work at the wall, um, and you want to protect your flooring and your carpet. Um, I always suggest that you buy an inch and a half angle brush um, and, the, and the nine inch roller covers. And I'll tell you, I, I did have the opportunity of using the paint with the primer in my son's room, which was uh, Philly's blue. So it is so blue, it's the only color I can describe it as Philly's blue. The ceiling um, was white, thank God. But I found that when I repainted the walls with the paint and primer, believe it or not, folks, two coats, you would never know that that room had been blue in the past. Now, ceilings always come first. Always paint the ceiling first. Uh, walls come second. And you want to do two coats uh, for each at least. And please, let them dry Okay, don't rush the job. You know, do a, do a coat. Usually within a half hour, it's dry, you can come back. And then you do your cut-ins, and then all of a sudden, you know, the novice just became a painter. So uh, with, all, with all projects, uh, I ask that you do the homework. Believe it or not, it, it sounds funny about it, but, but spend a night thinking about it. You know, I kind of call it dreaming um, because you, you want to methodically lay it out and then plan, plan, and plan. Get the right tools. Start slow. Don't rush. Be methodical and do things in the right order, and you should be fine. Make sure, again, that you turn off the circuit you're working on. Turn off the water to the house if you have to. Um, always use a valve on the building side, folks, of the water meter, because if it hasn't been turned in a long time, it may fail when you turn it back on. So this is why they provide two shutoff valves at the water meter. Always, again, on the building side, if need be, or for emergency, then you can use the valve on the street side of the meter. Um, and that's, again, only for emergency purposes. Uh, plan your time for the task at hand. I think that's very important. If you have to run back to the hardware store for that one thing that you forgot about, this can take maybe an hour or more off your planned time to do the job. So if your task involves square footage of materials, and what I'm thinking of here, folks, is insulation, carpet, driveway sealer, um, buy maybe 10% uh, than what you may need because you can always take it back. Um, that Again, that hour loss may mean that you have to finish it during the week uh, well, again, if you think about it, time could be lost with kids, uh, the wife, or like I, I always like to say, life in general. But bottom line, do the research, have the tools, have a plan, be patient. And that first task that you've done on your own, you know, you will never forget. And keep in mind that the second time you do it, it gets a little bit easier. The third time gets easier yet. And before you know it, you know, you're going to be the one who are helping your friends for that six-pack cost. So um, next week, um, I've got a good topic. And, again, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an avid newspaper reader, 
and it's and it's going to be based on what is the news for 2015. So I'm going to talk on things again that are dealing with millennials because you folks are the power that that uh, is is coming into uh, your own. You're the number one shoppers right now. You are the ones who are the home buyers uh, and the realtors are looking for you to buy real estate. And I've got a lot of things that I think you're going to find interesting. But at the same time, I'm going to talk about some propane safety and, uh, again, other things that I've come across in the news, especially about Philadelphia, that uh, I think uh, is worth bearing uh, a listen to. So, Barry, any points for me, sir? Well, I've, I've learned uh, the hard way that sometimes – you're better off uh, calling that uh, contractor and paying the hundred hours for him to knock on the door than to try to do things myself. I've had uh, some good and bad experiences, but one thing I stay away from, I've learned, is anything to do with plumbing. I've had some pretty bad disasters with with trying to fix the plumbing myself. Well, with plumbing, there's so many couplings and and washers and gaskets and uh, different size water supplies and drain lines. And, uh, and I find even still I, can, I, I have to run out for that one seal of that one gasket. And that's why I'm, I know about this hour loss because I've lived it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I, and I've, also, I've, also, I've also learned uh, at the same time, don't ever try to do a plumbing job myself at midnight. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because, um, I, I, I can only imagine, Barry, but, you know, or try to do something after dinner time. That's right, that's right. There are certain times you just can't get a hold of anybody to, to come out, and uh, if, if something goes haywire, uh, the, 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 if they come out, they'll charge you double or triple time. Yeah, I had a circumstance once where I was replacing the copper drain under my garbage disposal, or the trap under my garbage disposal. And, and Barry, this trap was, you know, still chrome, you know, the good old stuff. And uh, when I went to release the lock nut, it just broke in my hand. And this wow. was one of those after-dinner things. So my wife still had all the dishes, you know, sitting on the countertop. Um, of course, nothing could be run. Uh, I had to end up dropping the garbage disposal. We ended up doing this, the, the dishes in the laundry sink. We couldn't use the dishwasher because the dishwasher was connected to the garbage disposal. Well, thank you, Barry. And again, I look forward to, listen, to talking to you next week. And as it is Sunday, please spend time with friends and family. And we'll talk to you next week on the House Whisperer Show. And uh, thank you, Jack Milne. Always an interesting and informative program. And uh, we invite our listeners to tune in again next week for another edition of the House Whisperer Show with professional home inspector Jack Milne. And as Jack mentions in the program, you can listen to previous shows, or if you have any questions, visit thehousewhisperershow.com, or you can go to our own website, www.dbam.com. This is Barry Reisman, and thank you for listening. We'll talk to you again next time. La, 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 la.